All right, so I've got something a little bit different that ain't welding. I've got a trailer hooked up right now. It's actually another YouTuber so just down the road from me. He uh, came to me trying to figure out why his trailer is wobbling, like it's out of balance doing this. So I'm gonna take it. I rode with him, but I gotta hook it up to uh, move it into the shop so I can take it apart and look at it. He said he had troubles with this hub and these bolts which they do they don't they're not all on because of uh, the studs all, he said all these like all four corners is almost like they were all stripped or not stripped but none of the nuts wanted to come off and he had to get two new tires put on this side and that side Okay, so I've got it all jacked up in the shop on that, and I got two jacks in from the back, got all four wheels up. Uh, he's already had these back two tires replaced, but I spun the first, the front axle, and this is what I found. It's moving up and down, so I'm guessing one of the cables or belts or whatever you want to call it is broke. And it does the same thing on this side. I think this one was worse. They're just 10 ply tires and I know he... It's a heavy duty trailer but they just don't put heavy enough tires on them. And that's probably what's happened. Just old, old tires just gave way. So I've already contacted them. Let them know what was the issue and... He'll, I'll probably have him come get those and he can get either a new rim or new tires Whatever he wants to do and I'm definitely gonna fix this Wheel hub for him that way he has all the studs and nuts on there That way he doesn't have to worry about it later on. So I'm definitely gonna take that off Get it repaired, but I'm almost positive. That's gonna be the shaking I, I, I'm assuming that when the worst shaking is that's the if the tires are opposite of each other when they're out around it it probably does twice the damage so but we're gonna get this fixed up and get them back on the road so i've got both tires off the front he's gonna actually take them get them uh get new tires put on them uh i did look i feel like this trailer is undersized on its tires it has a 14,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating and it's only running 10 ply. Uh, it doesn't say how much the trailer actually weighs, which I would believe it'd be probably three or 4,000 just in comparison to my, uh, my other equipment trailer. But my trailer out here it's running the same axles. It's also, I believe this one's a 24. That one's also a 24. Run 7,000 pound axles on both front and back. And it's only got a thousand more pounds of gross vehicle weight rating. And it's running 14 ply on the tires. These are only 10. And he hauls a skid steer and a, a little compact tractor on it. So I, in my opinion, these tires are way undersized or way under the ply rating than what it should be in my opinion so he's gonna get those replaced 
I'm going to go ahead. I've got the hub off, got all the studs knocked out. I did put one back in for video purposes, which people may not care, but uh, the way to take this part, take that bearing out, or take, sorry, taking that off the spindle. It's got this, on this axle, it's got this little clip keeper on this that swines up with the shaft and it goes over the nut. So you pop that off. The nut was actually loose, which is supposed to be to a certain point. They're not supposed to be tight since it's like a preload on these, which I'll show you how to do that when I put it back together. Go ahead and knock this last stud out. Just like that. And if you want to save them, if you're replacing it as a drum, replacing that and it's not studs, you can put a nut on there and beat it off with that and then you can save your studs. But I would I wouldn't think studs are expensive enough to not replace them when you go back with it. So we're gonna replace the studs on this, clean up the bearings a little bit. I've got some good Schaefer's high temp grease that I'm gonna put back in this when I put the bearings back on it and assemble it. Right now I'm just beating, uh, putting the lugs back in. So I'm beating them through. It's not a good idea to put the nut on there and pull it through like that. I think there is a way to do it correctly like that, but I don't have the stuff to do it. So I'm just beating them in. You can feel the difference between the hit once it gets to the bottom. Pretty sure these do these are a little bit longer but at the end of the thread is where they are the same but everything looks exactly the same height I'm gonna grab my tape measure and I'll just double check it just to be sure so I put some of the high temp grease on there before I put the bearing in there. That way I know the bearing had immediate contact with grease. I'm just assembling the rest of this. And then before I tighten everything down, I'm gonna spin it and grease it as I go. And there is such thing as too much grease. Uh, you put too much in there, it'll actually overheat the bearing from my experience working at a chemical company. You can actually tell when you had too much grease, if you put a heat gun on, or a laser thermometer on there, you could actually watch it heat up as you put too much grease in there. It's like a fine line. I don't know exactly what that fine line is, but just in my experience, it's what's what I've seen. Put this on there. So I've got everything put back together. I'm gonna snug it. This is my setup. It's an inch and a half crow's foot on a half inch drive ratchet. It's actually a 38 millimeter. I would rather have a socket because I would be able to uh, tighten it with it by hand. But what you wanna, what you wanna do is go the opposite direction where you're tightening it and snug it up. What we're doing is setting preload.
that's pretty tight. That's that'll get really really hot when you're going down the road. So that's not what we want. I'm gonna go a little bit more. Set it. That's pretty tight. So I'm gonna go and back it off. Loosen it all the way, and then I'm gonna tighten it by hand. By hand, I need some with a little bit of leverage, but. I'm gonna do that sequence again, cause I think I'm a little bit too much on loosening it up. You can tell it's too tight because it stops almost immediately. Loosen it up. And then twist it by hand. In comparison, This one I haven't touched, which I know it doesn't have brakes. We'll just go over here. That one probably spends a little bit more, but it hasn't been touched either. So we might be able to loosen this one up just a little bit more. But there he is. Supposed to tighten it to where it's pretty snug and then back it off and then hand tighten it and then you'll put this keeper on there and that'll keep that nut in place. You're not supposed to, these, these are cone bearings on each side of it. So they're facing each other. So when you tighten them, it puts everything in place on the races and uh, <clears throat> That's, you're setting the preload is what it's called. So there's not like an actual torque spec on these. You're just supposed to tighten it, back it off, and then hand tighten it. So, and then put that keeper on there, and it's ready to go. Nothing really to it. So, just to give you kind of some, a reference, that nut is actually somewhat loose. That's what you want. Spins freely. I just don't want to do a, a recap because it I was kind of all over the place with it. But so when you put this bearing, put the outer bearing in it, the uh the spacer and then the nut, you'll snug it down while you're turning the bearings, you're setting the preload. So you snug it, get it. I wouldn't say super tight. You don't be stretching the cages of the bearings or anything like that. Then back it off until it's loose, like completely loose, where you can spin it completely off by hand. And then you're going to go back and tighten it by hand and get it snug by hand. It's usually easier with a socket. I just pretty much grab the end of this. That way you can kind of snug it. And then you're going to put this on. These are a newer Dexter 7,000 pound axle. It's got this little cage for the nut and then that flat piece. That's gonna keep that nut secure. So you kind of, it's got a touch of movement, but it, it you can't see, visibly see it. And that's where it's supposed to be. And then it's supposed to freely move. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something from it maybe. I uh, just wanted to say before you guys go that this trailer is owned by a YouTuber from down the road. His name is Brock with Rock Hill Farms. I'm going to put a link to his YouTube in the description. He has actually continued pretty much from my video. He has taken the trailer to go get new tires put on it to fix the issue of his trailer wobbling. So if you guys could just head on over to his channel. You can watch his video see the problem being solved by putting some heavier duty tires on there. Thanks again.